Hey guys, this is Mike. I just want to show my Jeep Renegade Micro Camper build. Okay, so this Jeep Renegade camper setup is able to sleep one. Um, it has a nice foam mattress topper here on top of a rock climbing crash pad as a mattress. I'll show you how that crash pad fits more in a second. Uh, the, the bed is uh, full length. I believe it's over six and a half feet uh, long. I'm uh, more than six feet tall, so I wanted one that I could sleep comfortably in. Uh, this drawer here as well is upholstered with some cushioning so you can sort of lean against it while sleeping and it's nice and cozy. And this handle is nice and low where it's hard to actually hit anything on it when you're asleep. Uh, obviously lighting wise, we've got uh, a nice vintage LED light bulb here that's protected by this sort of grate. Uh, and then we've got this LED strip and they're both controllable individually. Uh, and they're hooked up to this Jackery 500. We've got some real tile here in the kitchen, if you will. Um, this is where I put my water jug. I can fit a seven gallon water jug here when you can just buy it REI. Uh, and when the trunk is open, you can flip it down and then you get a nice spigot right here to go down. Um, this drawer itself is a sliding door so that you can use it even when it's, uh, even when the, there's stuff in the bed. And there's a decent amount of storage space here. I built this to be able to fit my clip stick, uh, my, my pack, uh, and it can fit other stuff like my spare rock climbing shoes. So the thing that really makes this build unique is the fact that it uses a crash pad as its primary mattress despite fitting cabinets. Uh, as you can see, it takes up the full width of the build, um, but I can actually remove this and the cabinets actually stay right where they are. Um, I built it in sort of a C shape using this aluminum and then some steel brackets. So I drilled holes in the aluminum and then uh, put in some threaded bolts. It still flexes a little bit. When there's weight in the cabinets, it can be a little trickier to get the, uh, get the crash pad in and out, but it's all totally possible. Up here on top of this big cabinet, uh, there's room to fit five 11 inch storage cubes. Um, those are sort of the, the standard, one of the standard sizes. The lip here means you can simply slide them over. And then I had a cube full of clothes, food, cooking, climbing, and a cube full of dog stuff as well. That leaves this open as a nice little table space. I had some cable or organizers for my USB charging so I could charge my phone and devices right here as a sort of nightside table. I also built this pull out drawer here. This is pretty dang long. Uh, once again, it has grouting in between these fake marble tiles here. Um, it's uh, super nice. You can park it somewhere, pull out the table and cook dinner. I would just use a, a jet boil. Um, and yeah, I would store all of my cooking supplies in one of the cubes right back there. Oh, and if you're wondering what this hole here is doing, I would use this to put my, uh, just put my chair here so I could just slide my chair straight into the cabinet. Uh, sort of a hack to get this one cabinet to be storage for all of my long things like my backpack, my stick clip, my, my chair, uh, without having my chair be buried inside this cabinet if I ever wanted it. Moving to the side. I have extra storage over here. On the upper side here, there's three coat hangers so I could hold puffies, rain jackets, etc. And then below this, we have some eye hook storage as well. Um, this is super useful for rock climbing. Clip a carabiner uh, and I could hold like my quick draws and belay devices and everything like that. As an added benefit, the way these two work together, uh, if you've got coats hanging, then people can't see your rock climbing gear. Between the tint on the window and the coats covering everything up, so the crash pad only comes up to about here in the, in the car. Uh, in front of that, I've got what I lovingly call a footress. Um, this is a custom bit of mattress that I, that I made and upholstered to go all the way over in front onto the seat. Um, that is just some foam and some carpeting. Uh, this can be removed and then set aside in order to bring the passenger seat up. And now that the crash pad has been removed, 
can show you how this footress is installed. There's two 2x4s, uh, two I think they're 2x3s, um, on some hinges that connect to the floor. And then this part here is a drop bolt, a drop pin, so I can just take this out, set that aside, uh, and now you can see where this connects. So for the curtains here, I use the standard sort of store-bought curtain rod where you can twist, expand, and then tighten to get it to squeeze into fit. Um, but obviously that's not going to work super well when you have these curved surfaces. Uh, and I also wanted to get the curtain rod as high as possible to minimize the amount of privacy loss over here. Uh, so what I ended up doing is actually designing and 3D printing a custom, a custom mount here. So this is a 3D printed part. Uh, it uses S-hooks, the sort of standard chain linking things you can buy at the hardware store. Uh, to just fit right over the trim here. Uh, it's kind of hard to take out, I would show you, but it's yeah, a little tricky to take out. And this mattress topper here is a custom sewn uh, fleece. I kind of wanted to do something like uh, pleating or whatever it's called, uh, but that was going to be a lot of work and potentially not look right with just a simple topper. So I ended up settling for this hexagon approach instead. So lastly, the, there is storage under the platform. Uh, this platform is about as low as I could build it to still be flat, uh, and it's pretty small, uh, so you can keep a decent amount of headroom. But the storage under the platform is surprisingly more useful than you would think. Uh, I was able to store a solar panel here for the Jackery. Uh, I've got some window coverings here as well. And then this is also accessible from the side. And believe it or not, I was able to store my uh, backpack with, with some with like a laptop and chargers and stuff in it, GoPro, uh, and it it fits right here pretty well. And as an added benefit, it's obviously completely, you know, you can't see it when it's parked at all. So I thought this build was uh, super useful. When I did have it completed, I I probably camped in it maybe 30 nights or something uh, before deciding to buy a van instead. Um, it honestly was really great. Uh, yeah, I took it to Wyoming and Washington and all sorts of cool climbing places. Um, yeah, I could definitely store all kinds of food, cooking supplies. Uh, I think the longest trip I spent was a trip to Vitawu, Wyoming. And I think that trip lasted about 14 or 15 days. Uh, overall, uh, pretty dang cozy. Uh, and yeah, of course I took it bouldering and uh, getting the, the crash pad uh, access was, was pretty awesome. In a small build, the, the key to, to good space usage is really uh, multi-purpose everything. So if you want to have a crash pad in a build like this, uh, by far the best thing you can do, other than putting it in your roof or something like that, um, is, to, is to use it as a bed. And I just definitely struggled. Uh, I ran all sorts of options on how to pull that off. Uh, and this is the one that I settled with and seemed to be the only one that made sense. Um, Using aluminum as the C-frame is what made it really all work because uh, wood is plenty strong for this type of thing. Um, you just really want it to be as, as thin as possible to, to fit everything. There's not that much wiggle room once you put the crash pad in to have like a thick wooden frame uh, re wrapping around it and under it. There wasn't room for that. Uh, but aluminum is a really rigid metal. It's like more rigid than steel. Um, and so a little bit of money spent with, your, with aluminum and simple you know metal jigsaw bits was all it took to to pull this design off um for sure there's some trade-offs in in livings and something like this i mean the obvious thing is you know if you can afford a van and uh and want to do that instead want to spend a lot of time in it then then yeah then you can sit up in a van so of course this is a micro camper it's not going to be as luxurious um, but if you're going on a trip where you're happy to cook outside uh, and you're happy to you know, basically just, just sleep in it and have some stuff, uh, then this is a great way to pull it off. Uh, I also definitely could have, uh, if I needed even more storage space to do something like live out of this, uh, then something like getting a rooftop box because I could already store, you know, several days food. Uh, another downside of the design is that there's nowhere great for a cooler. So when I was uh, traveling in this, I basically had a cooler that I sort of just kept on the bed. And then whenever I went to sleep, I moved it onto the driver's seat. The other obvious downside is is sleeping one instead of two. I did uh, get a new partner on the road uh, and we slept in her setup for a while and that's uh, 
that's part of why this is no longer going to be my setup going forward. Um, so for anyone out there, else out there who's like looking at Jeep Renegade ideas or SUV ideas or, you know, wants to fit a crash pad into the back of a SUV like I did, uh, hopefully this is a useful inspiration for others. In terms of construction, this is the footress. Uh, so this side goes towards the end of the car, uh, towards the, the front of the car, and then this is, goes to the trunk. Um, so for the most part, this is built out of half inch ply. You can see that it's carpeted with some staples. There's one that's coming out. Uh, carpeted with staples. Uh, and then this is not carpeted for this hole for the single drop bolt. Um, this carpeting is just something that was for sale at Home Depot. Um, and then underneath it, there are two hinged legs that are uh, two by threes. They're a little bent, but they do the trick uh, with some really simple hinges. Um, and then this itself is just a two by three that's been drilled down from here into the two by three, uh, cut at an angle, and this rests on the seats where the seats are folded down. And then this rests on the floor behind the driver's seat. The foam itself is just some project foam. I think I had some, bought some like two inch foam and three inch foam, once again from Home Depot. Uh, cut them to fit, stack them on top of each other, and then yeah, use the, uh, the staple gun to upholster the carpet. So in terms of installation and removal, uh, the first thing is to take the footress out, which I've done, as you can see. Uh, and then actually the next thing that you do is actually to remove just the bed platform. Um, when you install it, you do the reverse order. Uh, and when you install it, you can skip the cabinet. There's no need if you've got this stored in your garage and you're going on a trip. Uh, there's no need for you to install this. Uh, these are two separate pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole thing out now. So this is pulled out in a single piece extended like this, leaving just the cabinets behind. Um, in terms of construction, I did originally build this to be collapsible, so it does have these hinges. And I made this part hinge separately so that you can close just the passenger side uh, in case you want to have the cabinets in and the bed in and fold up. So you can pull up just the passenger side uh, so that you can put this platform under and that's enough to move uh, and it frees up the uh, passenger side back seat. Uh, I didn't really use that, but it was interesting enough to make. Uh, this is just half inch ply. Uh, and then these are two by threes that are screwed on. And then this is the one uh, drop bolt here. The drop pin goes in the bottom and this is just on a simple hinge. And then you can pack it up like this for storage and it's you know nice and compact, at least this part is. And once the platform has been removed, as you can guess, that you can just take this thing out pretty easily. All right, so for the construction of this part, uh, like most things, it's half inch ply. Uh, so half inch ply here, half inch ply here. Uh, looks like I had to sort of connect these two pieces together and reinforce that a little extra. Uh, it is stained with a decent stain as well as you can see. Um, these themselves are maybe the most important part. This is just um, you know square aluminum tubing. Uh, these are just steel angle brackets. Uh, just literally just cut these with my jigsaw and then drilled holes with a standard drill bit. Um, and then they're screwed into the other side here. Um, getting these angles right was a little difficult. These holes had to be expanded, for instance, and basically drilling into metal. It's really hard to keep the drill bit stable. Uh, I also had a few variations of sort of swapping out some of these uh, bolts because they sort of took up room where the crash pad would slide in and would become a block on the crash pad. Um, but that eventually all worked out. Um, this bottom part is MDF, which turned out to be sort of a, a mistake. It's cheaper, but it's also heavier, and it it split quite about when I was quite a bit when I was working with it. Um, 
And then yeah, I painted it with black on the black paint on the edges here, and I printed it with a with a nice sort of orange here. I think it was a pretty nice color. Uh, this tile is like basically a single piece of tile, but it had to be cut in half. The tile itself had like a jagged edge pattern. Um, so yeah, so I had to cut it down the middle and then meet the two sides uh, and then used grout. Uh, behind this as well, you can't see it, but there's a tile adhesive behind it that's just like a peel and stick adhesive and worked super well, held up great. Uh, this is an outdoor uh, light fixture protector and it never fits super well. I always kind of wanted to put this on in something nicer, but it honestly worked pretty well for the purposes of just protecting the bulb. Uh, and then it's basically just a drilled hole. Uh, this lamp kit itself is like a make a lamp out of a bottle kit that I used. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, you can you can buy these. You can buy these. Everything pretty straightforward. Um, the sliding door is aluminum C frame, uh, and then very thin plywood. Uh, and that allowed me to use another thin piece of plywood here uh, for the batting. Uh, the two pieces are secured through the handle. Uh, and then this is basically just fabric that's been stapled down with a small amount of batting to make it nice and soft. Um, and then this ultimately provides the sliding action. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, two by three. Uh, looks like I shimmed this as well for some reason. I no longer remember why. Um, and then a little bit of curvature to fit the shape of the Jeep. This was completely rough-handed and until it worked. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. One thing, if I were to do anything differently on this again, these beams are really good stability if I try to squish them closed, but they're very terrible like this. And you can see this is drooping. It's not in itself a huge problem, but if I were to do this again, I would find a way to get even just like a small piece of plywood uh, to connect these. Basically, you just want triangles um, and a single piece of plywood that's thin and connected along each of these joints would hopefully have been enough to prevent this, this wobble and just make the whole thing a little bit uh, easier to get in and out and uh, more stable and strong. Um, if this eventually goes, it's going to be because these things wiggle themselves loose or wiggle the holes dead.